also speak to that probably. He was um, the first of us to come across this story some 10 years ago and then shared it with Michael and then I was lucky enough to get it. So we'll start with Brian. Well, yeah, so 10 years ago I was in uh, federal uh, law enforcement in the United States and um, working in the southern part of uh, Texas, I came across these detectives that we were attempting to help and this story kept coming up and I'd lived across the world and I'd never heard something as, as poignant as this so it, it became a, uh, it almost haunted me so I, that's when I started talking to Michael Mann. The the um, the what what it, what attracted uh, me to it, and then and then attracted Amy, and she of course put her own stamp on it, her own authorship on it, was the uh, haunted nature of the environs, and the fact that the uh, victims aren't high-profile victims, so there was a sense of um, that these were crimes that were committed, but there wasn't a, a vigorous law enforcement that was applied to them. And the, um, consequently, it seemed to distill into the real quintessence of homicide, the taking of human life, in a very personal and real specific way, because it was so specific and so regional. And, you know, when I, when I, you know, Michael commissioned on to write the script some 10 years ago, and then when I was lucky enough to get a chance to read it, it came with a stack of research. And one of the elements of the research was an article that was written, I think by a Texas journalist, that had a map of some of the locations where some of the victims were found. Um, there, I just, and there are just over 50 victims since 1969. I think some 27 odd cases are still unsolved, cold cases. So this map had this, was just this incredible image of these faces, of the locations where the victims had been found and then their faces. And there was something about these images of these women, uh, girls, um, some of them, you know, basically children, because I think because the images were school photos, so they had that phenomena that you do in school photos where they're looking right at you because they're looking at the camera. So I just, I spent, I remember I spent a lot of time even before I read the script um, looking at this map and feeling all these sort of eyes looking back at me. We replicated that um, in Jeffrey Dean Morgan's characters in Brian's office, it's the map on the wall. And um, um, it, it, what really struck me was the kind of phenomena of crime that had occurred outside Texas City and the fact that there were several, there's so many victims, so many different perpetrators of the crime. There was a sort of real sense of the ubiquitousness of that kind of crime, but it was something that was, um, unfortunately almost systemic. And um, I felt, as I'm sure, as I know Don did, and I know Michael did, sort of a need to try to help tell this, this story. What is the most important lesson that I learned from my father? He's one of the greatest living directors. Is what? One of the greatest living directors. <laughs> um, you know, it, there's a unique advantage, a really unique advantage to having Michael as the producer and ha as having him as, as my producer. Uh, in that he's also a director. And so he could address financial logistical issues from the perspective of understanding the priority of the aesthetic and the priority of the, of the creative. Um, very, very unique advantage. So it was, if there was any lesson in that, it was watching him. So it was very interesting um, watching him juggle the priorities of logistics of production and yet also facilitating um, production circumstances that would enable the best of everyone's talents, mine, the cast, the crew, to come forth. That was an incredible lesson. I'd like to follow up on that question with a question to, uh, to Michael. Michael, both as a film, as a director and as a producer, you have worked on a lot of noirs and, and, and crime stories. Uh, it, it, what do you think, Amy, this is a very strong film with a very, very original perspective on the genre. What do you think she brings to, uh, to, 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 to the subject matter? Uh, what's the strength of, as a filmmaker? 
Well, the most, she brings to it the most important thing, which is her own perspective. Uh, in our family, our, we have a very hardworking family, and so Amy first was on working on a set when she was very young, as a young teenager, and um, all our kids have. Uh, um, so being on a set and seeing uh, filmmaking occurring is something everybody's grown up with. So it's not as if suddenly you know fell on a set. So, um, but what Amy brings brought to this material was her own unique perspective on um, uh, a, a number of things visually, but also uh, a, you know an understanding of. Um, She's a mother, so it's an understanding of motherhood. She's a different relationship to, to the victims, and in some sense, a different relationship to the uh, detectives that another director would have brought to it. The other directors I had talked to about this over the, there's a very, very special piece, uh, Texas Killing Fields, and I was very, very careful about who had directed. So I only talked to um, three directors, of which Amy was the third. First was Danny Boyle, second was John Hillcoat. And then there were many years intervening, and then, then after Amy had done a couple of Friday Night Lights, uh, you know, I think you know it'd be terrific if she wanted to take this over and do it. And that's uh, what she did. You know, I might add too that that when I sat down with Amy for the first time, I, I was nervous yeah. about the whole process, and and I and and before I could even talk to her about what my perspective was and how I wrote it and what I thought it, direction it should go in, she started talking and it was exactly where I wanted to go with it. It was exactly the, the perspective. So I think, I think if you look at the characterization of, of Little Anne, um, if, if you wind the clock back to when Amy first began with the material an example, Little Anne probably was not as prominent a character as she is now with Chloe Moretz, and that's one of a number of things that Amy and he brought and he brought to it. You know, Don can actually speak to this in his experience. Uh, well, I think there was a there was a there was a, the design of the narrative was absolutely to bring it back to the family because I think that unfortunately. Um, many of these things in reality do. It would be easier, I think, if it, there was a bad man that we didn't know who it is. But I think, unfortunately, in many of these circumstances, the bad man is somebody, I mean, statistically, I think it bears out that the bad man is somebody that we know, um, particularly for victims of serial sexual assault crimes. Uh, in terms of Cheryl Lee's character, it was important to me that, it, that though it was never spoken, you, you get the sense that she was at one point a beauty and at one point had promise and at one point, and she made a series of bad decisions and now she finds herself in this place and that um, she does love her daughter and she's trying to provide for her daughter and protect her daughter, the scene where she slaps Chloe and, and takes her out of the house, that she, in, in, her, in her way, she, there, there is love. And, um, but, but the series of decisions that she's made has created circumstances that we now see in this story. 